Hey everybody, it's Aaron. I hope you're doing well. Little announcement for you before we get started with this week's episode. Look, nobody should have to brave the professional world alone, especially in this post-COVID, remote, hybrid, weird world we all find ourselves in. And that's why with the company Glassdoor, I helped create and now co-host a podcast called The Lonely Office. If you've ever wondered How much of my real self should I bring to work? Or what's the deal with Zoom meetings? Or is it okay to turn down a promotion? Or what do you do when you're fired? You may be interested in this podcast. These are all questions that I've asked in my career. And after our official launch last week, the podcast jumped into the top 10 career podcasts in the United States. So pretty proud of that. And as 7-Minute Story listeners, I think you might dig it because every episode starts with a story told by yours truly, and we source all of these stories from anonymous work accounts from professionals all over the country that they leave on the Glassdoor app. So true stories from the professional world, people trying to navigate that blurry line between life and work. So if it's something you're interested in, I wanted to tell you all about it. If not, let's keep doing seven minute stories every week and we'll just hang here. All right. This week's episode, I was thinking about my grandmother. And just getting a little nostalgic and thinking about different episodes that I have told about her house. This is my grandma on my mom's side. And she literally lived in this tiny little cottage over the river and through the woods. And I went back in the archives and I found a story titled Over the River. And I can't believe it. It was from 2018. It's like, it didn't seem like that long ago, but it's been a little bit. So especially for you new listeners, so you don't have to scroll 57 times to get to episode 15 of season one. I wanted to re-air this for you. And as I just listened to it when putting a final mix together, it still rings true. And maybe it'll connect you with a little journey back over the river and through the woods, wherever your grandparents live. All right. Enjoy, everybody. You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. This episode, Over the River. I don't know if I like the way that I look at the world now better than the way I looked at it as a kid, the way that I perceived it. It's like a playground. When I was a kid, I could play on any playground. Didn't matter where it was. Didn't matter what it looked like, if it had a swing or if it had a slide. I could glean something from that. I could create an experience out of nothing. And I would just play. But now as an adult, I could look at that same playground and I could say, that's just a rusted out piece of shit playground behind a drugstore in a city that's lost half its population and its industry in the last seven years. What a shithole. Wouldn't want to go there. And you know, maybe that would be true. Because I know better now, right? Reminds me when I would go to my grandmother's house in the summer, and I've talked about her in some of these stories. And she literally lived over the river and through the woods. And she lived in a very quaint cottage, very clean inside, very warm and safe. And she lived the latter half of her years out in this rural space. And she lived on a gravel road. And and if you kept going down this gravel road, there was probably 10 to 15 other houses, but they weren't really houses. Some of them were on slabs. Some of them were shacks and shanties. And even though she and I would spend a lot of time inside watching soap operas and Peter Jennings late at night, and then playing this weird board game named uh, Racco, uh, when the weather was nice, I'd be outside riding my bike up and down this road. And she always told me, don't go past the gray house. Don't go further down the road. As soon as you hit the gray house, stop because there's danger on the other side of the road. And I remember being so fucking curious. I would just ride as fast as I could from her house all the way to the gray house and then pump my brakes on and stop and let the smoke from the, from the gravel road just kind of dramatically flow up. And I would just look down this road and wonder what was down there. What was the danger at the end of this road? 
but I never went past it. I never, I never went past that gray house. I stopped and I, I would turn around and ride back. I didn't want to cross my grandmother. And when I would ride back, I looked at some of the other houses and I would see people sitting on their porch and I would wave. Then there were some other houses that looked abandoned. There was another house that would have a Ford F-150 just sitting in the front yard, weeds growing through the engine block and some farm equipment that used to be used for agricultural purposes. And now it's being used by rodents and crows for a house. And then there was this one house. There was this guy who's probably middle-aged, long, stringy hair. He would walk in his front yard aimlessly, always smoking a cigarette. I was afraid to look him in the eye. He had sunken in cheekbones and his eyes always scared me. And every once in a while I'd look at him and I would see that he, he would wear a t-shirt, same t-shirt every time I saw him. And it was, it kind of looked like an American flag, but it was different, kind of a different looking American flag. And eventually I would return to my, my grandma's. 20 years later, I started asking some questions and I found out at the end of the road past the gray house, there was a registered sex offender that lived there. That's perspective. Something you would only know as an adult. My grandmother was just trying to protect me. Two houses over from her, this kid, Timmy, he was my friend. He lived there and, and, and we would always play outside, never really inside, always outside and always in the yard pretending to be knights or soldiers. And we would emulate our favorite action stars like Steven Seagal or Jean-Claude Van Damme. And we would do karate moves on each other until we actually hit each other. And then we would cry and then we would laugh and then we'd do it all again. He was a really sweet kid. He was good to me. And I remember he had sandy blonde hair. He had a, he had these dimples and his great laugh and his, his shirts never went over his belly. Either they were too small or he was just chunky, but they would never go over his belly. And we were just kids in the summertime. One day he invited me over his house and I had never been inside. So I asked my grandmother and she was hesitant, but she said, go ahead. And walked over to the house. And when we walked inside, I could tell it was just different right away. The smell hit me and it just, it just smelled off. It smelled bad, but I didn't want to say anything to my, to my friend. And we walked in and there was cats everywhere. And there was like shit on the ground from the cats, clothes piled up, walked into the kitchen. There's dishes piled in the sink. And in the TV room, his mom was laying in a recliner watching Sally, Jesse, Raphael, I remember, and flipping between that and Maury Povich with the bunny ears on the TV. And she was laying down eating, and she had to have been at least 300 pounds. It, it, it reminded me of a movie I just saw called What's Eating Gilbert Grape. But his mom was nice enough, and she would say, you kids have fun. And we did. We'd go into his room, and we'd play video games. Even though now I have context and awareness as an adult, even though now I can tell you about playgrounds and neighborhoods and culture, much more smarter than my kid self. The one thing I did as a kid and that I hope carries through as I continue to get older and I hope I don't lose is that I always put personhood above circumstance. And maybe that was just because I was a stupid kid. But I don't think it takes a genius to know that that is noble. And that's worth aspiring to. I hope you enjoyed the episode. A lot of people have been coming up to Aaron and I at parties, sending emails, and calling to tell us how much they love the podcast and ask when the next episode's coming out. A great way to stay connected is to visit the website, 7 com. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And while you're there, let more people know what you think about Aaron and his storytelling by rating and leaving a review. Lastly, the biggest compliment you can give us is to share your favorite episode with friends on social media. 
Thanks again for listening.